Blocks have to be one of the best classic toys ever. They allow a kid to be creative over and over again countless times. And whether it's Legos, Duplos, Mega Blocks, the old-fashioned wooden block type, or just some other plastic blocks, it doesn't matter. They all unleash a child's creativity. And so I was thinking, how can I make blocks even better? And so I thought, well, usually, bigger is better. Kids like things that are kind of over the top, and so do I. So I thought I'd make my grandson some big blocks. I sell on eBay, so I have lots of cardboard boxes around, and I thought I would just pick some out of there, kind of a standard size box, and make a bunch of big blocks out of them. So here's what I did, here's how it turned out, and here's what my grandson thought of it. To get my boxes ready for painting, I wanted to glue them shut. I didn't want to put tape around them because I didn't want that tape line to kind of show on the outside after I painted it. So I glued them down with Gorilla wood glue. And then when I was done with the glue on both ends, I put rubber bands around them to make them stick good together. And I'm actually going to put a primer on them first. I've got some Rust-Oleum American Accents 2 times Ultra Cover Primer. And I'm doing that to cover up some of the markings on the boxes and so my actual final cover of paint will adhere better. And the primer also has actually less moisture in it than regular spray paint or other paint. So that'll be better on the cardboard if I put that on there first. So that one's done and primer dries pretty fast. So I'm going to just kind of lift that off to the side and go on to the next one. And the next one and the next one. And I'm going to use just some pretty cheap white spray paint to cover it. My boxes are all painted and now I'm going to paint some numbers on each box. So I'm going to switch colors with the different numbers just to make it a little more interesting anyway. Look a little better, have a little more color to it. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to use these to paint with. I really have never used them before. They're called spouncers. And I've used painter's tape, the kind that says it's a clean release. So it doesn't really tear anything off the box or anything off the stencil when you take it off. So here goes, like I said, I've never used these before, so I'm gonna try them. And uh, it's gonna be a trial and error, definitely. So we'll see how it goes. I'm sure those of you people who use these all the time, you're thinking, what's the big deal? Just do it. I'm gonna go over it a few more times and get some darker color on it. And repeat that for several more numbers. There's one, literally. Excuse the messy room behind them, but this is what I've got so far. These 12 boxes have numbers on them. Uh, they're in no particular order here, of course. And one giraffe stenciled on there. So I'm going to put some more animals on there. And there's the other side with my grandson's name, the letters for his name, and some other animals. And I'm thinking about painting between the gaps of the letters just so it might be less confusing to him as he's learning his letters, the letters of his name, so I won't think there's supposed to be lines between them. That probably wouldn't really matter, but I might paint in the gaps on those letters. I wanted to put a picture of a train on one side and make it kind of a block puzzle, like the little small wooden block puzzles, but only bigger, because you know, bigger is always better, especially with kids, so go over the top if you can. Then I put it onto a piece of poster board. I'm going to draw around it with a pencil and then I'm going to paint it in. So here we go. I've got it all drawn on there now and I've got it kind of marked what colors go where. And this is what it looks like right now. Just got finished. It's not quite all dried yet, but not too bad. I'll probably do some touching up on it and then decide what picture to put on the other side. I think on this side I'm going to do another one of my grandson's favorites, a garbage truck. He has watched the blippy garbage truck video many, many times. And so have we. And here's the garbage truck side of the blocks. I've got that completed and that looks pretty good. And I've got a little garbage can up there in the corner. I did go ahead and paint in the spaces on the stencils for the numbers and letters so they all look normal. Down here. Where is that one? Over here. 
Can you put this one in there? He's going to help. Can you put that in there? Oh, let me help. Yeah, you can. Say push. There, you did it. Big blocks are just fun to play with. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no matter how you use them. And you can roll cars on them yeah. pretty good, yeah. can't you? Okay, now what are you going to do? Go! You high five, Grandpa. Give him a high five. Good yeah. job. It's just like little blocks. Big blocks are fun to stack up and knock over. That's true. Hey, it's all about fun, isn't it? That's right. And learning. And learning. Cohen. Is that your name? It was. C O H E N. <laughs> I'm going to work with Cohen on making the puzzles, learning how to do the block puzzle and learning how to spell his name and learning his numbers and we're going to have fun with them and of course stacking them up and knocking them down the classic we'll find lots of ways to play with them thanks for watching bye 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 say bye Let's wave can we wave bye bye